Hey, it's Frank here with 4D Honeybee. It's just after week three of installing three nukes, and it's my second thorough hive inspection that I'm going to do. But I'm going to start this off with a bottom board inspection. So these hives all have the um, the open bottoms with just a big piece of core plast in there. And uh, I find that if you start off by looking at the core plast, you get a lot about what the bees have been doing in there. So I checked it out a few days ago, and I'd seen that they had opened up a whole frame of capped honey that I'd put in there for them and probably moving it around. So you can also see if brood is hatched because you can see the uh, the pieces of wax from the from them chewing their way out or helping the, the brood chew their way out. So I'm going to start off looking at that and then uh, we'll do uh, an inspection on each hive and we'll see how she goes. Okay, so we'll check out our first bottom board here. And by the way, don't set down your hot smoker on the bottom border. That's what will happen. There's a bit of uh, advice for you. Now we'll see ants down here because uh, the bees don't have access to this area. So this is like where the ants get their free crack at any fallen uh, honey or nectar. And we can see here, just in this area here, looks like there's some new brood hatching. And in this area here as well, looks like some new brood has probably hatched. So um, we'll have a look there. And we'll know what we're looking for. We'll check the next uh, bottom here. See the ants. See, I mean, it's never good to see this many ants or any ants at all, but here they don't actually have access to the hive, so the bees leave them alone. And we'll just get rid of these guys. It usually does a good job of. Just dispersing them a little bit. Last one. Not too much action on this one, just a bit of brood that's been hatched here, it looks like. And it's also a great place to check for your for your mites and hive beetles, right? Because they fall through the screen and they end up on this board. And they usually end up getting stuck here or making their way elsewhere. And I can't see much of anything other than ants here, so it's a great way to know how healthy your hive is by looking at these bottom boards. It's early morning, only about 9 o'clock in the morning, and it's going to be a gorgeous day, but uh, because of this, the bees have just started foraging, so I expect there are a lot of bees in the hives. So it's not the ideal time for me to get into the beehives for inspections, but it's the only time I can do it this weekend. So hopefully they won't be too upset. And they know it's a gorgeous day and they're going to want to get out there and make some honey. But we'll just see how it goes. It's going to be a quick inspection. What I suggest, it's only my second year of beekeeping. But one thing that I always do when I do an inspection is I have a plan. And having a plan basically ensures that I'm in the hive as little time as possible. So the plan for this time is just to see if uh, the queen is still laying. Uh, they've already hatched out brood from the first uh, nuke, from the frames that came in with the nuke. So I just want to see that she is continuing to lay and that uh, the hive is growing. Um, at week three, I don't expect to do much more. Last year, by week four, I was starting to uh, think about adding the second super. So you can expect, expect they weren't going to be up in the lid because it's so early, but I do see a lot of comb produced there, which is great. This lid is really glued on well, which probably tells me they've built up a lot of uh, burr comb. So what I'm going to do this time, instead of lifting it straight off like I did last time, I pulled a couple of frames up with it. I'm just going to try and twist it to break the seal. That didn't work well. There we go. Definitely a lot of burr comb on this one. Twisting it also minimizes the chance of you squishing as many bees. Whoa. This one is really glued on. I don't think I've ever had a lid glued on as firmly as this one. You can just tell it's a ton of burr comb in the middle. So I'm just going to try and twist it so that the frames don't come up with it. My goodness. 
That took a lot of effort. Look at that bur comb. Wow, oh wow. I've never seen so much bur comb gluing the lid on. And that certainly tells me that they're doing well. It also tells me that maybe they need more space to build more comb. Um, not too sure about that, so I welcome your comments on that. Looking for the queen on the lid here, just in case. And I don't see her. They've put a lot of nectar in those cones already because, uh, in that comb, because, uh, they're trying to get it out now because I smoked them. So I'll just set the lid down there so they're welcome to go back in. And what a lot of activity there. Look at the size of that drone. My goodness. Come here, buddy. Look at the size of that fat old drone. Okay, looking for the queen up top here. I wouldn't really expect to see her here, but I'm gonna give them some smoke to get them going down below. And I mean, it looks like a very healthy, very healthy colony. And they've grown substantially. It was a four frame nuke that I put in here. I staggered them, which I was advised against very wisely, I believe, by a, by a YouTuber who said that uh, staggering the five frame nuke meant that you're, you're kind of dispersing them too early and too far in the hive in the cold weather and they might not be able to keep warm. So I went back with the plan of, uh, of uncheckerboarding them. But by the time I did, at the one week mark, they had already moved all the honey and moved all the, uh, and the, the first layer of brood had hatched out already. So they were doing quite well. But that was good advice that I'll think of next time. So this was pretty full of honey. They've moved some out and they're still feasting on it here. So far so good. Now this is the one hive where I I'm not quite sure if I've seen the queen. I believe I saw her the first time. She's pretty small. And I haven't seen her since. In all the other highs I've seen the queen. So second frame in. And they haven't done too much on it, but they've started to cap some honey on it on the outside here, which is good. And yep, they're just continuing to, uh, looks like they're filling it with, uh, with nectar, not doing too much on this frame. Now here's a, a cell that they're building out that looks like it could be a queen cell. In that position, it would be a supersedure cell. Now, sometimes they build these out and don't actually use them, so there's nothing in there right now. But I'll keep an eye on that and make sure they're not planning to swarm. Okay, so I'm going to uh, take some of this burr comb off the top. Oh, sorry about that, bees. That's not a good way to keep bees happy. And really that's all it takes to, to turn from a nice pleasant inspection where they don't even know you're there to having them start to uh, get pretty upset and attacking you. Once they start bouncing off your, off your head, you know they're upset. They're seeming to calm down all right, but if you haven't figured out already, try not to drop frames like I just did. This one's feeling pretty light, and it looks like they're just, uh, not doing too much in here. see right inside the cells and look for eggs here. I haven't seen any yet and I don't see the queen on this frame but all very small young bees. Eh? So these are the ones that just hatched a week ago or so.
Uh, looks like they're just getting things ready. This time what I'm going to do is set the frame inside and wipe the bee comb off, or the burr comb off while it's inside. Come on guys, make way, make way, come on, I don't want to squish it in the comb, come on, get out of there, get out of there. Here's a beautiful frame of comb, of uh, brood, I'm sorry. Probably 90% capped and ready to hatch next week. So this is really what we're looking for to make sure they're making new brood. I still have room in this hive. I'm not close to considering putting a second box on. But... Um, all right, now here we've got brood on one side but not in the middle which is unusual usually the queen, queen likes to lay starting in the middle and working her way out in a more or less circular pattern so i'm gonna have a good look at the frames in the middle and you can see what looks like a queen cell on the bottom here and have a close look at that and see what's going on with that really like to see eggs in the bottom of these cells I do not see eggs. I see some pollen and some nectar. Now again, that cell at the bottom is empty. I'm not too worried about it, but it's something I'll certainly keep a close eye on. Last year, the bees swarmed on me, and uh, that hive was never able to recover. So I want to try to avoid that this year. I'm also going to be building a swarm trap next year, and I'll, or uh, sorry, next week, and I'll post a video on that too. Because again, if they are going to swarm, at least having a trap gives a possibility that they'll swarm to your trap and you can catch them and just split the hive that way on your own. What I'd ideally like to do is be better prepared this time if I know or feel I know they're about to swarm and split the hive myself before that happens. So another very heavy brood frame here. So this hive is really set to explode, really doing well. Let's see if I can find the queen here. No one told me beekeeping would be so hard on your back, you know? Constantly leaning forward, and my posture isn't the best to begin with. But uh, I think there should be a beekeeper's yoga course that someone should develop to make you more flexible. And look at another beautiful frame of brood. Boy, this one is actually heavy. It has so many bees on it. And not so many bees, so much brood in it. Yeah, I'm looking for the queen, but I wouldn't necessarily expect her here because it's already laid and capped. So. Very, very pointy uh, drone comb at the bottom there too. Again, maybe they're developing that into queen cell, but I doubt it. Doesn't look like it. This frame, holy smokes. That is absolutely chocker flock, flock, you know what I mean, chocker block full of brood. And again, cells that could be supersede your cells there. Don't see any queen cells on the bottom. Oh, there was something happening in that one.
and looking in that cell, it's looking like a supersedure cell. I don't see anything happening in there. Let's look for the queen. See this side, another beautiful frame. I'd like to see more honey on the sides of these frames. Usually what you like to see is honey on the sides coming up, a 45 degree angle, and at least an inch or two of honey across the top and all the way down. There's still decent amounts of honey in the hive, and certainly they don't have trouble with foraging right now. But it'd be nice to see more honey on these frames. I think once these, uh, once this brood hatches, they're going to be pretty hungry. Okay, this frame's going in. Wow, another brood frame, nicely full. I'll get rid of this burr comb here at the bottom. This one does have more nectar and honey, just on the corners though. Nice to see more honey in these frames themselves. And it's always nice to see this kind of pattern. The queen's doing a great job of laying these, these patterns. You can see she's got the drone comb on the bottom. And the regular brood all over the rest of the frame. And they are capping some honey on the sides, as you can see. But usually I see more honey than this. And again, it could be that uh, I started this frame off with two and a half frames full of honey anyway. so. It could be that they just know they have honey in the hive, so they don't need to build so much on uh, on their brood combs. Who knows? I certainly don't. Whew. Some very light colored bodied bees here. Look at that one on the top there. Very light. Now here's a frame where I would expect to find a queen because they're just starting to to cap the brood in this frame. I hope that was my phone buzzing and not a bee in my pants again. Because that was not a fun experience. Funny, but not fun. Okay, so let's have a look for the queen here. When you see the queen, it's very much a hallelujah moment. You, you might mistake her a bunch of times, but when you do actually see her, there's no mistaking the queen. And again, on this side, looks like they've got another supersedure cell starting there. So I'm going to check that out. Again, this would be a frame that you could expect to see the queen. I'm going to look for some eggs as well. I see larva. Lots of larva. Don't see eggs. Nothing to be upset about with this hive. It's doing really well. And uh, again, well, let me check. Uh, there was another supersedure super cell here that they're building. And those always concern me. So look at it right here. See it right there? So I'm going to take a look and see if there's anything going on this side. Can't 
see anything. But again, I'd like some advice. What do I do? Do I plan a split? Do I destroy it just in case? Or do I let nature take its course? I never know. When I finish this up, I'll give them one more blast of smoke and then I'll do the, all the bird comb on the top. Then, so I don't keep uh, smoking them. This end frame is very heavy with honey, but they've moved a lot of it out. So um, they're obviously redistributing it in a hive and actually they've refilled it with nectar. So they're filling it with nectar now. So it should be capped honey soon. So, my plan of starting this hive out with uh, two and a half frames full of honey seems to have paid off. I have not fed these bees at all this year. And I don't believe I need to. It hasn't been a great spring. It's been very wet here, but conditions are great for the bees other than that. And uh, they seem to be doing really well without feeding. So if I can avoid that, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I'm just going to take this burr comb off. And then I'll take the burr comb off the lid, put it back together, and Bob's your bee uncle. I'm seeing that even though it looks like I'm trapping these bees in the in the comb as I take it off, they all get out before I even knock it off the, the hive tool. So things are good. All right, now we'll get them off the lid here, and then we're done. That sounded all right in here. Much squishing at all there. See something that's really neat when the hive gets hot and when you smoke them, they start to uh, fan. They get their rear ends up and uh, and fan the hive. And when they're doing that, when you're pulling through the frames, you can actually feel wind moving through. And guess what? I just realized. I just realized I forgot to put two frames in. What an idiot! Look. lesson on how not to treat your bees. Now I have to open the hive again and bother them. Let's try and do it smooth again. Leaving a frame or leaving a hive with too much distance in between frames can be some of the worst things you can do to them. 
because uh, they just build burr comb all over the place. And the hive becomes poorly organized and then it's much harder for you to tend to them. So always just spend a little extra minute to make sure the frames are all spaced nicely. You won't regret it the next time you open the box.